How did we go from this? To this? What started as a movie about an undercover cop hanging out with a bunch of misfit tuners has transformed into an international crime-fighting superhero media empire. How did this all happen? Well, it's all tied to the loss of an actor, family man, and bona fide car enthusiast. The one we could all just really relate to, Hall Walker. And so, today on Blinker Flute, let's dig into the untold story about how Fast and Furious killed car culture. Let's go. The original film, The Fast and Furious, was released thanks to the budding tuner culture of the 90s. It's all thanks to one single magazine article. Remember those? In Vibe, Racer X. It followed the journey of street racers in New York City. And someone in Hollywood thought that it was a good article and it could make an even better movie. And at first they tried to make it a modern day Romeo and Juliet set in the street racing world. Thankfully, an executive realized that it was a terrible idea and told them to just remake Point Break but with street racers instead of surfers. And hey, it worked out. The Fast and Furious might seem like a time capsule today full of early 2000s trends, but at the time of its release, it captured the attention of a generation, including your boy. The misfit nature of Dom's crew, how none of them really fit into the normal society, but had made their own together was like an awesome punk rock gearhead fairy tale. They got a lot of stuff wrong, like danger to manifold, Motec exhaust systems, and a Motec system exhaust, NOS blowing up, RX-7 with just straight up wrong engine noises. But it also had a lot of very cool stuff that enthusiasts like you and me loved. You know, S15s, 2J Supras, Dom's Charger, practical stunts. What was supposed to be a simple ripoff of Keanu Reeves' movie turned into a smash hit. Vin Diesel turned into a star. Brian and Mia had a little chemistry going on, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it turned out audiences really loved seeing this cast together on screen. But Vin was such a star, he left the franchise. So when they geared up to make this second one, they cast this guy to replace him. Oh, and Ja Rule didn't want to return either, so they got this guy. Luda! Too Fast, Too Furious got roasted a lot for being cheesy, but hey, it still had some very cool cars. Well, for the most part. Don't even think about taking the convertible. Bruh. The intro was amazing. Suki's S2000, it's so over the top, it's hilarious and really cool. There's that great scene of a group of enthusiasts coming together to help defeat a crime boss. But without Vin or any of the cast returning, well, Universal thought that they'd used up all their goodwill and decided to do something with an all new cast and release it to direct to DVD. Do you guys even remember what direct to DVD is anymore? <laughs> I'm getting old. This one had the most car stuff of all. Practical drifts, engine swaps, wheel side kits, a touche course, and this thing. Whew. Not to mention the addition of Han, and Universal even convinced Dominic Toretto himself to make a very small cameo right at the end. Now, the studio execs realized that this movie was actually worth dropping in theaters, so they did, and it was a hit, especially internationally. So, what do you do when you have a film franchise with three entries? Make a fourth and pay enough money to get the original cast to return. Duh! Now, the Fast and Furious saw the return of Dom, Brian, Mia, and Letty, then killed off Letty and introduced the world to Gal Gadot. This is where we really start drifting off from caring about cars. I mean, yeah, there's a chase scene in the tunnels, but now the gang starts becoming international crime fighters. And Fast Five is when they become bona fide action heroes. Universal decided, we've got this huge crew of actors, let's bring them all back to the franchise, and as long as we're doing that, let's also add a famous wrestler turned movie star. Yeah, wait, that guy used to wrestle? Anyways, Fast Five relaunched the franchise. Cars are still a part of it, but now, finally, we got full on action sequences, gunfights, explosions, and an exotic location. Not to mention full on bonkers territory with an iconic safe dragged by two Dodge Chargers. <laughs> Great product placement, Dodge. All the characters are inexplicably given new skills. Ludacris is now a hacker. Roman is the smooth talker. And here's where we get the first big dose of family. Most important thing in life will always be the people in this room. Can you believe there's not actually Coronas in that scene? 
crazy. But the real kicker in this moment is right here. Whatever we do, we do not let them get behind the wheel of a car. And above all else, we don't ever, ever let them get in the cars. This is where the franchise is telling us Dom, Letty, Brian, and the gang, they're not mere mortals. They are super heroes. And when they get behind the wheel of a car and are hopped up on family, they become invincible. From then on, we get increasingly over the top action set pieces, completely detached from reality, runway sequences, Dom grabbing Letty out of the air, wrecking ball, Dubai triple car building, jump jets, etc. And while the original Fast and Furious wasn't exactly accurate when it comes to how cars work, danger to manifold, there was enough there to keep actual car guys like you and me interested. You know, two Jay-Zs, spooned out Civics, S15s, Chargers. At least it actually captured what it felt like to be in a ragtag group of people who came together around a shared interest wrenching on the rides and loving cars. You know, just being a car enthusiast. And sometimes amidst all of the explosions, rides to space, pro wrestlers, rappers, and Oscar winners, we can't help but just feel that Fast and Furious just doesn't care about the enthusiasts anymore. How did we even get here? Well, I can't say for sure. I believe it's all tied to the loss of Paul Walker. It was a shock to the entire enthusiast community when we found out that he was gone. He was the guy who represented all of us in these movies, an outsider who didn't fit in anywhere. And then he joined a group of crazy car kids and realized that's where he felt at home. He realized he loved his new family just so much that he was willing to give up his job, his career, maybe even his freedom for his newfound family. And outside of the film franchise, Walker was the one who was probably the biggest real life enthusiast. He helped his dad wrench on bikes growing up. With success, he grew his own car collection into a reality. And his brother Cody is still deeply involved in the enthusiast scene. Come here. Without a true enthusiast at the heart of the franchise, the franchise has lost a lot more than just one of its stars. The family in Fast and Furious is a chosen family. They're not all related by blood, but they all came together because of a shared interest, cars. So while family is the heart of the franchise, the way they became family was just by being a ragtag group of enthusiasts like you and me and all the rest of the subscribers here at Ideal. And I hope with the upcoming Fast X, Vin, director Louis, and Universal executives remember just what made the franchise so great in the first place. If anything, there is hope since, well, we got some flashback drag races in Fast 9. Spoiler alert, but uh, yeah, the movie's been out for like two years. Maybe they bring back Craig Lieberman or let Sun Kang take the reins of car stuff. Not to mention new Nissan spokeswoman Brie Larson joining the cast. And now villain Jason Momoa is no slouch when it comes to cars and bikes. And let me be very clear. I'm not saying I don't want insane action sequences and set pieces. I do, just like you. I'm hoping the Fast franchise salutes us enthusiasts with its next entry as well. Thanks for watching, I'm Brad, and if this is your first time to the Ideal channel, consider liking and subscribing down here, and maybe checking out these videos to watch up here. Otherwise, well, check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. I'm Brad, this is Ideal, and promise me one thing, keep living the Ideal lifestyle.